Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. God is good. Come on, say it with energy. God is good. And all the time. Is there ever a time when God is not good? No. Did God send the flood? Was he good then? Yes. Don't hesitate. Yes. Did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah by fire? Was he good then? Yes. When God answers your prayer, is he good? When he says no, is he good? Yes. Psalm 145, verse 17, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. We need to understand that. When we understand that, we're very less likely to be angry with God. Someone wrote me yesterday, uh, God has disappointed me. I said, okay. How can a sinless God disappoint a sinner? And so he wrote back and said, now I understand. So I told him, apologize to God. Mm -hmm. You see, we must be careful not to make God in our image. A lot of, you see, the Greeks and the Romans, they made gods. But because they made their gods, they made their gods in their image. So they gods committed murder, adultery, theft, you name it. The Roman gods and the Greek gods behaved like human beings. They committed the same crimes because they were made by human beings. But the Bible doesn't say, let us make God in man's image. The Bible says, let us make man in God's image. God cannot disappoint you. But we frequently disappoint God. And he is so patient and long-suffering, he takes stuff. We live in a society where nobody takes stuff. God takes. By the way, to be a Christian, get ready to take stuff. Or you won't last long as a Christian. You must take stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, enough of that stuff. <laughs> How was your day? Good. We thank God for the rain. It is a symbol of the Spirit of God, the early rain and the latter rain. Anyone with us for the very first time? You weren't here any time yesterday. You were with us first time? Ah, what's your name? My name is Randy Dave. Randy? Oh, that's my name. Good to see you. God bless you. I was wondering why you're so handsome. Okay. Now I have the answer, Brother Randy. God bless you, my good brother. God bless you. Anybody else with us for the first time? Randy, we're about to bring something for you. Look to your right. Here comes a nice man called Ian. All right. Okay. Got anybody else? Okay. All right. Oh, oh, hi. What's your name? Um, my name is Annie Gordon. Annie? Yeah. Hello, Sister Annie. Here's a gift for you. Thank you very much for coming. God, say amen for Randy and Annie. Amen. Ah, that was lifeless. Say amen again. One more time. Amen. God is good. All and all the time. Yes, yes. Do you love God? Yes. Yeah, I love God. I like him too. Very nice person. And I have proof. You see, let me tell you something. You cannot prove to anyone God exists. You can prove it to you. Are you with me? You cannot prove to anyone God exists. You can prove it to you. And when the person sees the work of God in your life, then the person becomes convinced there must be a God. Mm -hmm. If you are the only believer in your family, that's a tremendous privilege, an opportunity for God to work through you to let them know there is a God. And so be sure that you have proven for yourself that there is a God. 
And I'm ready to go to my grave right now believing there is a God. How do I know that? He has revealed himself to me. And no amount of scientific papers by people with multiple PhDs can change my mind. There is a God and I have met him. And I love him very much. Nice, nice person. All right, our subject for this evening, birds of a feather. What did I say? It is five minutes to seven. I'll release you by eight or before. I know you have to get ready for work tomorrow. Some of you perhaps work today. Work is a blessing. The first person to work was God. As far as the Bible informs us, the first person to work was God. Genesis 2, verse 1, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them, and on the seventh day God ended his work. Verse 1 of chapter 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Creation was work, and he rested from it. So God worked and rested. Then he tells us, you follow the same rhythm, work and rest, work and rest, work and rest. And so we thank God for work. All right, what's our subject? Birds of a feather. What is the f what's the full saying? Birds of a feather? All right. And those perhaps listening internationally to this message, they understand birds of a feather flock together. But the message is, the title is birds of a feather. If you're not using one of these, what should you do? Kill yes, kill it. <laughs> I know thou shalt not kill, but kill it, please. So it does not make a noise in the house of God. Okay. And this in the entrance of reverence. I hope you understand. Favor number two. While I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. It's a very serious request because one wrong word from me can cause some damage. I don't want to do that. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And that's what I want to speak, God's words. And favor number three, Think. Isaiah 118, come now, let us do what? Reason together, saith the Lord. God is a reasonable God. Satan is not reasonable. God will listen to you. He'll tell you, come, my son, come, my daughter. Why have you stopped going to church? Let's talk. Why have you stopped studying the Bible? Let's talk, says God. He's a reasonable God. I will listen, says God. Tell me why. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, touch my lips with a call from the altar. Fill my heart with your spirit and with the humility of Christ. Cleanse me from sin, that I may be a fit vessel in your hand. Speak through me, dear God, because you sent me. Bless those listening. Enlighten their understanding, Father, that the message may be comprehensible even to a child. Bless those following online or who will watch the recorded version, whatever the case, bless them as surely as we believe you will bless us in this building. Thank you, Father, for the high honor of speaking for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say amen, amen. and amen. amen. Go with me to Genesis chapter 1. We'll read from verse 1. And I read from the King James Version of the Bible. Genesis 1, reading from verse 1. Our subject, birds of a feather. We will divide Genesis chapter 1 into two sections, living and non-living. What are the two sections? And let's begin with non-living. Let's start from verse 1 and go on. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Question for you, is this living or non-living? Non-living. Light doesn't have to eat food to get energy to perform biomechan or uh, chemical processes. Light doesn't do that. Light is non-living. Verse 6, day 2. 
And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Quiz question, is this living or non-living? Non-living. It's just open space, the firmament. That's where the birds fly, and a higher level where the planets are. Non-living. Verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Now, is that living or non-living? Non-living. But it will accommodate living things. Are you following me? Later on, God will put living things and he'll, on the earth. He'll put living things in the sky. He'll put living things in the water. But for now, non-living. All right. Let's go to verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind. Now, is that living or non-living? Living. What is introduced? Look at the wording. What is introduced in the creation of grass and vegetation? A statement, an expression that is not found in the creation of light or the firmament or dry land. You're close. After, I heard it. After his kind. What's our subject? Birds of a feather. After his kind. Therefore, an apple tree will produce, come on, apples. Let's go to verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Is this living or non-living? Non-living. What is missing? After his kind. Because light does not reproduce. Are you with me? All right. Let's go to verse 20. And God said... Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly upon the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great wells, and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly, keep reading now, after his kind, and every winged fowl after, yes. Because is this living or non-living? Living. And so we have reproduce after your kind. Let's go to verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature, keep reading, after his kind. We don't need to read the whole thing. This is the creation of land animals after their kind. Birds were to produce after their kind, land animals after their kind, fish after their kind, plants after their kind because they are living things. Living things reproduce and spread themselves. Now, let's go to verse 26. What's our subject? Read verse 26 for me if you have the King James Version. And God said, Stop. Do you see after his kind in that statement? What is the equivalent? Yes. Let us make man in our image, which is functionally the same thing as after his kind. Because a cow produces a, mm -hmm, a bird produces a, God produces God-like beings, not gods. You can't make God. But he produces God-like beings. What does L.O.I. tell us in education, page 18, paragraph 4? Higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children who can finish it. Godliness, come on, godlikeness is the goal to be reached. 
So in a certain sense, we have God producing after his kind. Because the image of God was the image in Adam. God produced his image in Adam. And to show the power of that act, the glory of that act, I've said it before, you've probably heard it on tape. Go to Genesis 2. Let's read from verse 10. Our subject, birds of a feather. You have Genesis 2. I love you for your consistency. You never answer me when I say, do you have Genesis 2? Consistency is a good thing to have. What book did I say? Genesis, what chapter? 2, what verse? 10. Read with me. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth what? The whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There's Delium and the onyx stone. Name the three precious materials in that passage. Come on. Gold, Delium, onyx stone. There must have been quite a bit more. But we just have the names of three. Which means... This is when God made dry land, you see. When God came to make Adam and Eve, gold was available to him. Precious stones were available to God. He could have used gold as raw material. But gold itself is admirable. It's beautiful. God shows something lower than dirt. He made mankind from the dust of the earth. You look at the Hebrew, dust and earth are two different words. He made, God went as low as he could and put his image in dust. When Adam sinned and God came down to, uh, Christ came down, Christ said, dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return. When Abraham talked with God in Genesis 18, he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. I am just dust. And we have dust in company with ashes. Ashes is what's left when everything useful has been burned up. The miracle of God's image in dust. Now, when God did that, there was no sin. Now, the dust has been cursed. What did God tell Adam? Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Yet, God still desires to put his image in this dust. Mm -hmm. You see, God has this standard. The entrance of sin did not lower God's standard. The entrance of sin made it necessary to introduce the gospel to bring us up to that standard. God does not lower standards. He raises people. Come on, say amen with energy. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. He did not say that about the living thing called grass on the third day. He did not say that about the living thing called fish on the fifth day, birds on the fifth day. He did not say that about living things on the sixth day, land animals. The image of God only applies to human beings. What's our subject? Birds of a feather. And what do birds of a feather do? They flock together. Now, listen again. Let us make mad. Now, have you ever seen... Have you ever seen a pride of lions and zebras and, uh, and gazelles walking together? <laughs> well, no. See the lions going this way and the gazelles going that way. <laughs> Have you ever seen a group of cats hanging out with some mice? <laughs> Birds of a feather, come on, flock together. Now, when you read, let us make man in our image after our likeness, what did God intend? Yes! I'm not hanging out with goats. 
even though I made them, are you with me? And I care for them. I'm not hanging out with fish. I want to hang out with those in whom I place, come on, my image. Because birds of a feather talk to me, flock together. We were not to flock with Satan. But too many of us do. But you see, go to Genesis 5. Let's read from verse 3. It's 11 minutes after 7. By the way, if ever I go too quickly, which I do all the time, just say, slow down, preacher, slow down. And I'll be very grateful to you. What book did I say? Then says what chapter? 5, reading verse 1. Verse 3, sorry. Verse 3. Let me pray. Father, continue to be with me, please. I really ask you this seriously. In Jesus' name, amen. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son. Read the next few words. In his own likeness, after his image. Now, do we have image and likeness in Genesis 1.26? Yes. You better check. You said yes with uncertainty. Do you see likeness and image in Genesis? Let's say the verse. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. We have both. Now, Genesis 5 verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years. And we had a son in his own likeness after his image. We have a different likeness and a different image. And because of that, we have now a different group of birds of a feather flocking together. Because the image in verse 5, verse 3, that's the image of sin. The image in verse 26 of chapter 1, that's the image of righteousness. And birds of a feather flock together. Listen to Christ as he speaks to the Pharisees. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Ye are of your father the devil. You and your father hang out together. Because birds of a feather flock together. Now there are two feathers. Either the divine or the satanic. Not the divine and the Adamic. The divine and the satanic. Because the sinful nature existed before Adam was made. Are you with me? The sinful nature originated with Satan inherited by Adam. That's why Christ can say, ye are of your father, the devil. Birds of a feather. It's a law. Let's go to Matthew 23. Let's see that law expressed in a fairly negative way, but still genuine. Matthew 23, let's read verse 15. It's 7.15. We're reading Matthew 23.15. Matthew, the first book of the New Testament. <clears throat> Do you have that? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now read carefully now. For ye do what? Compass, sea, and land. Come on. To make one proselyte. And when he is made, read carefully now, finish the verse, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Wait a minute now. They make a convert, then the convert becomes like them. Because birds of a feather come. Mm -hmm. By the way, before a church tries to bring people in, the church should make sure they're bringing people into a safe environment. Because if you don't, when the people come in, if they stay, they'll become just like the church. You bring people into lazy church, after a while, the people become lazy. Why? Birds of a feather, come on, flock together. Lazy people hang out with lazy people. Busy people have no time for lazy people. And so the Pharisees, 
Jesus said, you traverse sea and land to make one proselyte or convert. When he comes into your fellowship, you soon make him just as useless as yourself. Now, what God requires is the opposite. We bring someone into this fellowship. The person should, by fellowship with us, actually be fellowshipping and flocking with God and angels, heavenly beings. Let's see that in Zechariah chapter 3. Let's go there. Our subject, birds of a feather. Zechariah chapter 3. What I'm telling you is not symbolic language. I'm speaking literally. God wants to literally fellowship with you. You don't have to see him. Because we walk by, not by. What book did I say? Zechariah, what chapter? Three, reading from verse one. When you found it, say amen. amen. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand. To resist him. By the way, the devil is your adversary. He does not like you. Even when you do his bidding, he does not like you. Understand that clearly. The devil is incapable of liking anyone, including his demons and himself. As to resist him. And the, the, he answered and said unto him, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Now, this is a picture of Christ forgiving sins, you see. Joshua represents Israel. You see, he was the high priest then. But he represents Israel, and on a larger scale, all those who come to God. And God has to remove dirty garments and replace them with new raiment, new garments. In the Garden of Eden, God removed the fig leaves, replaced them with coats of skin. Now, let's go to verse 6. As we try to see the connection with birds of a feather. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt do what? Walk in my ways. That's a condition. And if thou wilt keep my charge, then I shall also do what? And shall keep my... Now finish the verse carefully, and I will give thee places to walk. Come on, among these that stand by. Now, God is saying, I will grant you the privilege of fellowshipping with these that stand by. Who are these that stand by? The angels. And there may be angels that we've never heard of. Because I have not seen no, there may be angelic beings we've never heard of. God said, if you will walk in my way or keep my charge, walk in my way, you will keep my court, you'll judge my house, I will give you places to walk. Opportunity among these that stand by Joshua, meaning the church, I will grant you the privilege of fellowshipping with holy beings who have never fallen. Now, what you understand by never fallen, they are perfect. Listen to what Ellen White talks about, says when she talks about the sinner who confesses. If you give yourself, accepting, give yourself to him and accept him as your savior, then sinful as your life may have been, for Christ's sake, you are counted righteous. Christ's character stands in place of your character and you are regarded by God just as if you had never sinned. Amen. Steps of Christ, page 62, paragraph 2. God looks at you as if you had never sinned. God forgives you and does not put an asterisk next to your name. Forgiven. Go hang out with angels. You're sinless. Angels are sinless. What's our subject? Come on. Birds of a feather. What do they do? Flock together. God wants to flock together with us. Thank you. 
Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's read 3 and 4 of 2 Peter chapter 1. These words were written by someone who walked with Christ and was part of Christ in a circle. 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto what? And God, aha, uh -huh. whatever is necessary for godly living, God has provided. According as his divine power has done what? Given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Hmm. So there's nothing that should prevent you or me from living a life that pleases God. Because the, 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 the resources required, which are all divine, are provided. Now read verse 4. And keep in mind, birds of a feather flock together. Read verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Where are these promises? In the Word. Keep reading. That by these. Stop. By these. You cannot become Christ-like with no contact with God's Word. It doesn't work. A lot of us try to get around God's Word and just force ourselves to be good. No. The Bible calls that workers of iniquity. Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then shall I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Whereby are given unto them exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be what? Read the first verse. Partakers, come on, of the divine nature. Keep reading. Having escaped what? That is in the world through. This is how we escape the pollutions that we might be qualified to hang out, to fellowship, to flock with God. Let me say it again, because sometimes we live with this maxim, some things are too good to be true. God's will for you is that his divine nature lives in you. It will never make you God. It will make you godly and godlike. Now listen to me carefully. If, if you sustain that relationship um, on into the world to come, the time will come when God will elevate the redeemed to a position that is second only to God himself. Amen. Conflict and Courage, page 21, paragraph 5. I'll let you write that down. Conflict and Courage, page 21, paragraph 5. Listen carefully. God created man for his glory. What's the glory of God? The character of God. Mm -hmm. He made us to look like him. That after test and trial, the human family might become one with the heavenly family. Can you imagine the species that results from that combination? Have you ever seen a liger? What's a liger? Yes, a, a male tiger mating with a female lion produces. Now, they can't reproduce, but they are huge. They're bigger than the lion and bigger than the tiger. They call a liger. There's also something called a tigon, which is where a male tiger mates with a female lion, lioness. You have a tigon, but they are bigger than either of their parents. That's the result of a union now. The Bible says, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, but through the plan of salvation, we will be elevated above the angels. This is not Star Wars. This is the Bible. But I need to say it again. I went too quickly and you didn't rebuke me. The Bible says, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Through the sacrifice, the gospel, the atonement of Christ, the redeemed, the only planet in the universe where sin occurred, we who are faithful to God will eventually be elevated to a position above 
angels that have never sinned. Let me put the final nail, not in that coffin, but in that construction. Did Jesus take the form of an angel? No. He surely didn't take the form of an animal or fish. He took the form of human beings. In what condition? The fallen condition. That's not to glorify fallen condition. That's to show the extent to which God went to lift us up. And he demonstrated, despite your fallen condition, what I had in mind when I said, let us make man in our image, is still what I have in mind for you now. That is why the redeemed will be God's basis for, can I use the word, can God show off? Yes, for God's showing off. Look what I have done with dirt. Not just any dirt, cursed dirt. The whole universe amazed that the power of the gospel can produce a group, a race of people, use the word race in quotation marks, fit to fellowship with God at a level of closeness angels will not enjoy. Birds of a feather flock together. It is God's desire that you and I must reflect his character. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own Christ Object Lessons, page 69, paragraph 1. Let me say it again. By the power of the gospel, you and I can live the very life that Jesus lived in his human condition. Mm -hmm. We must not measure our standards by human standards. God hasn't called me or you to live like Michael Jordan or like Donald Trump or like some other millionaire, Warren Buffett or Bill Gates or Elon Musk or any millionaire sitting right here. God has called us <laughs> to live like him. Go to Revelation chapter 22. Let's read verse 5. Talk about birds of a feather. It's 7.30 on the dot. I've been speaking for 35 minutes. Ella White said, cut sermons in half. When I read that, I said, she saw me in vision. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I'm serious. She saw me and told me, cut those long-winded sermons in half. <laughs> mm -hmm. Revelation 22, verse 5. Do you have that? Let me pray again. Father, I'm not far from finishing, but continue to pour out your spirit upon me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. What does that verse say? And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. Finish the verse. And they shall, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now, from where does someone reign? From where? The throne. If you're not on the throne, you cannot reign. You're shaking your heads because you're nice people. But are you following me? <laughs> if you're not on the throne, you cannot reign. The Bible says they shall reign forever. Come on. And ever. Go to Revelation 5. Read verse 10. Revelation 5 verse 10. What does that say? And hath made us kings and priests unto God. We shall reign on the earth. How long will it be in heaven? A thousand years. The rest of the time will be spent on the earth. 
So in Revelation 22 verse 5 says, they shall reign forever, forever on the earth. But go to Revelation 20. Read verse 5. Now read clearly so I can follow you. Revelation 20 verse 5, what does that say? The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the? Read verse 6. The first resurrection and such the second death. Uh huh. Now. Uh huh. Go on. They shall reign with him what? Yes, so the reign begins where? In heaven. But according to Revelation 22, verse 5, we shall reign on the earth. Yes, hallelujah is appropriate. You don't look excited. You don't look impressed. <laughs> you don't. Do you understand what you're reading? How, you know, we go to great lengths to, to, to get to a high position in our organization, our company, whatever. We want high positions. God says, look, I will put you right next to me on the throne. And you say to me, where does the Bible say that? Thank you for asking. <laughs> Go to Colossians 3. Colossians 3. This is very serious. Then your self-esteem changes overnight when you understand this. Colossians 3, let's read from verse 1. Our subject, birds of a feather. What do they do? Flock together. Mm -hmm. Do you have Colossians 3? Verse 1, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Finish the verse. Where Christ sitteth where? On the right, that's where Christ sits. Now, the right hand means position of power. Not that he sits and ever moves. It's a position of power. The right side of God is power. When the angel came to Zacharias, who would be the father of John the Baptist, the angel stood on the right side of the altar. When Christ told the disciples, cast your nets on the right side of the boat, then they found fish. Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee, finish the verse, with the right hand of my righteousness. Christ says, on a side of power. Now, go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Let's read from verse 4. We were in Colossians. A couple of books back, Philippians, then Ephesians. When you found it, say amen. amen. Read verse 4. What does that say? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickness together with Christ, by grace he is saved, carefully now, and hath raised us up together, come on, and made us sit together where? Amen. Keep reading. In Christ. But where is Christ? On the right hand of God. And where are we to be? In Christ. So where are we? On the right hand of God. In Christ. On the throne. This is no joke. A position angels do not have. What, let, me, let me say this. I say it all the time in my messages. Because of the sacrifice of Christ, the gospel, there is a human being in the Godhead. Amen. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. He is God and he's man. Amen. He's human. Because of his humanity, we sit with him on the right side of God. Question for you now, don't get it wrong. You have one chance to get it right. When will that begin? Now. Now when you understand that, I am seated on the right hand of God and I can't give up one cigarette. I am seated in Christ on the right hand of God and I can't give up pornography. 
Do you see how people behave when they come to the presence of the Pope? They kneel. That's the Pope. When President Biden enters the room, what do people do? They stand up. You walk into a courtroom and the judge is seated, you take your hat off. You stop chewing gum. You're in the presence of a judge. Your behavior changes. Now, in Christ, we're seated right next to God. If we believe that, our behavior will change. Not we will change it, our experience will change it. In Christ, he's the changing power. You can't be a practicing sinner on the right hand of God. Sin cannot be your lifestyle. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you. What's the heaviest burden we can carry? Sin. My brothers, my sisters, birds of a feather flock together. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we read verse 18, then I'll let you go. 2 Corinthians 3, reading verse 18. Written by the Apostle Paul. It's 20 minutes to 8. Do you have that? Read with me. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, come on, from glory to glory. Ella White comments on that, she says, from character to character. Listen to the words again. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. Uh, Ella White writes, the glory of God is this character, but that's also very clear in Exodus 33 and 34. We behold the glory or the character of God are changed. What are the next few words? Into the same image. From glory to glory. In other words, we grow, we grow, we grow. As by the Spirit of the living God. We are changed. You see, there are only two images. The one in Genesis 5, verse 3. That's sinful, Adam. And the one in Genesis 1, 26. That's the divine nature. The only two. And you either have one or the other. Christ came and died, suffered, rose that we may have the image in 126 of Genesis. We do not need any help from God to have the image in chapter 5, verse 3. That's the way we were born. And so the Bible says, ye must be born again. You see, how does a lion reproduce? Come on. Birth. Mm. It's not by Skype. It's by birth. <laughs> the lion gives birth. Are you with me? The dog gives birth. The cat gives birth. The bird lays eggs. The fish lays eggs or give birth. Mm -hmm. Now, spiritually, we must be born again of the Spirit. But the Spirit is a divine being. And so the Spirit gives birth to us and we in this new birth, we come into the world now with the, the seed of God's character in us. And what do seeds do? They grow. Produce the same thing. And so Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, John 3, verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot even see. Far less enter. He mentions enter in verse 5. In verse 3, the kingdom of God cannot make sense to that man unless he is born again. Because spiritual things, come on, are, mm, 
Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 5, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's all it is. How much sin is in the Spirit? Come on. None. Which means God requires sinlessness. But it is the sinlessness of Christ given to us as we remain constantly surrendered to him. You know, there's a verse that says all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Isaiah 64 verse 6, I think it is. But when you convert it, your righteousness is still filthy rags. Because your righteousness cannot save you. So even after conversion, my righteousness is still filthy rags. If that's clear, say amen. I have to trust the righteousness of Christ. That's why God gave Adam and Eve coats of skins. Remove the aprons of leaves. Coats that he made. Because I cannot produce the righteousness that pleases God. It is produced in me. And so the Bible says, let your light so shine. The Bible doesn't tell you to shine. Listen carefully. It tells us, let it shine. In other words, get out of the way. To get out of the way, you must turn over the reins of your life to Jesus then he can shine. As long as you're in control, you and I will get in the way. It says, let the light shine. Who is the light? John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Birds of a feather flock together. Ah, God wants to hang out with you. And we prefer the guys in the bar drinking Bud Light. We prefer that to hanging out with God. Tonight, God tells you and me, my son, my daughter, whom I love, I want to fellowship with you. How many will say, yes, Father? How many will say, uh, stand up with me, stand up with me? When you hear the expression, God is good, we can say, yes. Only a good God can make that arrangement. But constant surrender, constant surrender. Because there's a power trying to oppose you and me, trying to get between you and God. So you've got to keep the relationship. You and God have got to be like two coats of paint. There's no room for anyone to get in between. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father. We thank you for this stupendous reality, this tremendous truth that you desire to fellowship with those for whom Christ shed his blood. Father, we thank you for the words of your servant, higher than the highest human thought can reach. We cannot even imagine the heights you have in store for us. Father, we accept it by faith. We're leaving this building tonight knowing that through Christ, we can sit at your right hand on that throne. And one day, if we remain faithful by God's Christ indwelling power, we will reign with him. Amen. Not just over the world, throughout the universe. Dear God, let that lift our spirits. Let that allow the cares of this life to become so small compared to the glories that shall be revealed in us. Let's leave this place with a spring in our step as we leave understanding that God wants to fellowship with us because birds of a feather flock together. Hear this humble prayer. Watch over us tonight, dear God, because we're yours. Bring us back tomorrow, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen.